Alright guys, well thank you for coming today. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the common illnesses of rabbits. This is the fifth in our um, series for the Zoo Corner Rabbit Rescue Education Seminars. We've had a lot of interesting talks so far. Um, you can see all the different talks that we have. A lot of these talks were actually filmed as the one today is being filmed. The only one that isn't on there is the basic rabbit care, but you can certainly find basic rabbit care information on Zoo Corner's website. Uh, the Zoo Corner website is mybunny.org. They do have a link from there to their YouTube site for all the videos. So, um, Today we're talking about the common illnesses, common diseases of rabbits. The last one to finish out the series of this year is going to be handling uh, elderly rabbits or rabbits with disease or disabilities, I should say, and that's going to be at the end of November. So we're looking forward to hopefully seeing a lot of you guys for that one as well. So there's lots of topics that we could cover today when it comes to common illnesses in rabbits, because there's certainly lots of things out there that we can encounter with these rabbits. I, I'm going to go over just a list of things. At the top of the list you can see here is dental disease and gastric stasis syndrome. I'm not going to touch on those topics today, but the things we are going to discuss is bladder sludge, E. caniculi, the longer name is encephalozoan caniculi, but it's easier to say E. caniculi. Um, we're going to talk about abscesses. We're going to talk about uh, upper respiratory infections, uterine cancer, and then heart disease in these rabbits. Okay, so to start off with, bladder sludge, what is it? Well, bladder sludge is where you have a lot of calcium, in particular calcium carbonate, that accumulates within the bladder of the rabbit. It's forms these crystals that almost looks like a sand, essentially. It accumulates in that urinary bladder slowly over time. Initially, it's just a couple of microscopic crystals here and there, because rabbits actually do secrete a lot of calcium into their bladder and excrete it out of their body. As they have a lot of excess calcium coming into their system, they can excrete more into their bladder, and the stuff can kind of accumulate over time. And as these little calcium crystals accumulate, they eventually accumulate into this stuff called sludge, which literally looks kind of like sand. You can see a picture here of what bladder sludge actually looks like. This is a white towel, and all that crusty stuff is actually the urine from a rabbit. And it's dried now, and all the stuff that's remaining is sludge that's in the bladder. Up at the top here, this is a syringe that's full of rabbit urine. And it, again, it doesn't project too well, but whoops, you can actually see kind of a difference in the syringe here. All this stuff is the calcium sediment that's on the bottom of the syringe versus the normal urine on the top of the syringe. So you can imagine if you had a little sand hanging out in your bladder, it probably wouldn't be too comfortable. Um, there's lots of different causes for bladder sludge. It's one of the diseases that we don't have a great handle on it yet to really understand and be say, able to say, okay, this is exactly why it's happening. There's lots of different things that could cause bladder sludge to occur. And so it's something that when an animal is coming into the hospital and it's diagnosed with bladder sludge, the veterinarian has to really go over a lot of history on the rabbit. Diet history, you know, history of being around other rabbits, you know, behavioral interactions, all different sort of things to really get an idea of what could it be that's going on with this particular rabbit that caused it to have bladder sludge. There's a list of all these different things that can cause bladder sludge. At the top, one of the most common things we think about is excessive calcium intake. Again, rabbits, they are really good at extracting calcium from their diet. So other animals have to, when we, for example, humans, eat something that has calcium in it, we actually have to have vitamin D in order to adequately absorb that calcium from the food item that we took in. Rabbits don't actually need to really have vitamin D functioning to really absorb calcium effectively. They just absorb all the calcium in their diet that they take in. So if they're absorbing all that calcium, all that calcium has to go somewhere. And so how they're designed is to excrete excess calcium that they don't need 
uh, through their bladder. And so if there is something that they're eating that's really high in calcium, then higher calcium intake, more calcium that's going to get lost in the bladder, and therefore more ability to actually form this sludge. Other things, of course, have contributed to um, bladder sludge. There's certainly lots of rabbits that I have met who have been on diets that don't have high calcium levels and still have bladder sludge. So urinary tract infections is another issue that we see that we think has some relation to the development of bladder sludge. E. caniculi are put up there with a question mark. We will talk a little bit more about E. caniculi, but E. caniculi, uh, it's a controversial topic for sure, and it's one of those diseases that could potentially result in bladder sludge problems. Obesity is another problem. With obesity, rabbits tend to be sitting around more. They're maybe not as mobile, hopping around as much. And if they're not as mobile, they're not exercising as much, they're not essentially, you know, um, jiggling up that bladder and getting things kind of moving around in there. Everything's able to kind of sit more and actually form a nice little sediment. And sometimes we certainly have had rabbits where they seem to be urinating fine. Their urine looks nice and clear. If you take an x-ray, you can see all this sludge. And it's almost like that sludge literally acts like beeps, uh, sand on a beach where, you know, water can just kind of flow over it and not really kind of penetrate into it and help break it up. So rabbits that are exercising more and are a little bit more trim um, we assume that as they're hopping around and everything, it's really kind of getting that calcium stirred up in that bladder, able to be excreted easier. I put neurological disorders up there as well, so that's going to be any sort of hind limb issues, paralysis, paresis. Again, kind of goes along with the obesity issue where they're just not able to move around as much, or also they may not be able to empty their bladder as completely as they should because of neurological problems because the nervous system is really important for controlling urination of course and controlling when they start urinating when they stop urinating so they may not be able to completely empty their bladder and therefore sludge can accumulate more um, I put lack of exercise of course that goes with obesity there is also the thought that genetics has a role in it too we have seen rabbits where they are related and they seem to have, the family seems to have a problem with it. Um, and certainly it's been in cases where we know rabbits are truly related but live in different homes and a lot of, of you know, a group of them may have uh, sludge as an issue. So it's certainly genetics potentially could be playing a role. And then lastly I put up idiopathic. And idiopathic is just a fancy term for, we don't know why it happens. So. <laughs> Okay, I did already briefly talk about this. The reason we look at excess calcium in the diet as one of the number one causes of bladder sludge is because of the unique way that rabbits are absorbing calcium from their diet. Other animals have to have vitamin D to adequately absorb that calcium. Rabbits don't. Rabbits just absorb all the calcium that they take in, and therefore they have to excrete it. They excrete it through their bladder. If they're getting too much, too much in, ultimately comes too much into the bladder, and there you go, you can have an issue. So what are the signs of a rabbit that has bladder sludge? Well, they can be a bit variable. Uh, one of the obvious signs is actually just seeing that sludge in the urine. So if we were to remember that first picture that we saw with the lecture here, where you had that white towel and there's stuff that literally looks like just dried sand kind of all clumped together, that's sludge. So if you're at home, the rabbit's acting totally normal, but you see urine that looks like that, you know you have bladder sludge, you know that you have a problem that we need to be addressing. Oftentimes it's not that easy. Sometimes rabbits will make it easy for us, but a lot of times they don't like to make it easy for us. Oftentimes what we're seeing instead is these rabbits are straining to urinate. So they'll go into the litter box, like this little guy in the picture here, and they just sit in there and they'll kind of lift their tail up and they literally look like they're straining. A lot of people will come into the hospital and say, hey, my rabbit's constipated, he can't poop. In reality, the majority of the time when a rabbit looks like it's in that litter box and looks like it's straining and looks like it can't poop, it's not that it can't poop, it's that it can't pee is often what the problem is. Um, other things you can see is actual blood in the urine because that calcium that's in there, you know, it's like having, again, sand in your bladder, which can certainly irritate the wall of that bladder and make it um, bleed. So bloody urine is one of the signs. 
You may have nonspecific signs as well, like GI stasis signs because they have pain in their abdomen from that sludge being in there. And then lastly, frequent urinary tract infections are another thing that we may be seeing. And the reason for that is, one, urinary tract infections could potentially be causing sludge, but two, when you have that sludge that's sitting in the bladder there, bacteria, if they get into the bladder in some way, they can kind of hide out in the um, sediment, in that calcium sediment, and then they can, these rabbits can have repeat urinary tract infections, and you may not know they have bladder sludge causing those repeat urinary tract infections unless you actually take an x-ray to identify it. So how do we go about diagnosing bladder sludge? Well, one is based on physical exam. The rabbit comes into the hospital, we get the history, we you know, may hear from the owner that, oh, the rabbit's been straining to poop, and in fact, it's been straining to urinate. Um, or owners may come in and say, hey, I actually saw some sludge, or what is this stuff on the towel? Sometimes cases will be so severe that when I feel that abdomen and I feel where the bladder is, I can actually feel a firm, almost sandbag-like object there. Of course, radiographs are going to be the most helpful thing, and I'll show you some of those in just a moment. Ultrasound can be helpful as well, um, that visual appearance of the urine, of course. And then when rabbits come into the hospital with this as a problem, a lot of times, you know, we diagnose the initial issue, and then sometimes we're having to do other diagnostics to try and figure out why is it that this rabbit is having a problem, or are there any potential secondary issues that could occur with this rabbit from sludge. So we may be doing other diagnostics too, doing things like culturing the urine to look for infections, or even checking how their kidneys are functioning. So here's a couple of x-rays. So um, if you look first at this x-ray down at the bottom corner here, just to orient you guys to the x-rays, everything that's black in the x-ray is going to be gas. Everything that's really, really bright white is going to be a mineral. And then all the shades of gray in between are going to be things like fluid and soft tissue. The rabbit's head is over here, and its tail is that way. So in this particular x-ray here, the bladder is in the back portion right here. And so what I can see in this x-ray is I can kind of see this sort of gray colored circular thing, um, or oval shaped thing I should say. That is the urinary bladder in that picture. And that is a normal urinary bladder. That's what it should look like. A bladder that has sludge, you can see up in this picture here, again, the rabbit's head is this way, the tail is that way. You can see quite a difference where you actually have this really bright white stuff in that little circular object. Again, that's the urinary bladder. That's all sludge. So it's usually very easy to identify on an x-ray if we have sludge or not um, because it shows up just so bright white. And you can see this rabbit over here has a real problem from bladder sludge because this bladder, this is a really small picture, um, but it's taking up a huge amount of that rabbit's abdomen and really being quite a problem for that bunny. This is an ultrasound image. And again, it doesn't project too nicely in the sun here, but what you can see, this whole thing is the urinary bladder. On ultrasound, it's a little bit different than looking at an x-ray. Everything that's black on an ultrasound is going to be fluid. So what I should be seeing in the urinary bladder is just black. It should look completely black, like there's nothing in there. But what you can see in this image, it is nice and black up here, but it's kind of gray down here. And what that is, again, that's all just sludge that's just kind of setting out, sedimenting out there in the bladder. Um, I did just briefly put up a slide here about complications from bladder sludge. Because you can have your primary problem that can lead to secondary problems. And so bladder sludge can lead to urinary tract infections, as I already mentioned, because the bacteria find this nice little sandy environment to hide out in um, that sometimes antibiotics aren't always able to get in as nicely as we'd like to. But then the other thing is urinary blockage. And so all that sand, that sludge that's in that urinary bladder, I've had it happen before where it's just accumulated so much that it literally blocks the outflow of urine, and if you have a blocked outflow of urine, that's a real dangerous situation for a rabbit to be in. If a rabbit's draining and it's not producing urine at all, that's an emergency situation, and that's a rabbit that needs to get to the hospital. Because rabbits and any animal that is not able to urinate, they can go into kidney failure within 24 hours of not being able to urinate, and 
if they're allowed to um, wait even longer than that, it's like two to three days before they die, which is a really not a nice way to die. So it's something that if a rabbit is straining to urinate, definitely something they really should be getting into the hospital for, because even if we get it to the point where, um, you know, maybe we give it a little bit of time, but we didn't give it a two to three days to come in, if a rabbit comes in and it has kidney failure now because of bladder sludge issues, then we have even more to be working against. So um, definitely something that a rabbit has to come in for right away if we see straining. So what do we do when a rabbit actually comes into the hospital with diagnosed bladder sludge? Well, the most important thing to do right away is be getting these guys fluids. Because simply getting them fluids, getting fluids into their system, is going to help to kind of flush things out of that bladder. We need to help, you know, mobilize kind of that urine around and get everything excreted. A lot of these guys, when they come into the hospital, um, are dehydrated. And so we need to rehydrate them first and then really kind of get those things flowing nicely. I then put up bladder flush. So a bladder flush is where we actually um, insert a catheter into the urinary bladder and flush all that stuff out of the urinary bladder. And it's something that sometimes you need to do that a few times before you're completely able to get all that material out of there. I've had rabbits that have even had to unfortunately go to surgery for something like this, which isn't the most common thing. That's definitely the exception rather than the rule. But I remember one rabbit that just was not responding to medical therapy and we had to surgically go in there and remove the sludge and when I was taking that sludge out of the bladder, as soon as it was like hitting the air, it was literally turning into sand. Um, and you can just imagine that was sitting in your bladder that that would be quite uncomfortable um, for that particular rabbit. So of course the next thing on their pain medications. Of course pain medications are something we're going to be giving right away when they're coming into the hospital too, but very important for them to have. We need to reduce the calcium in their diet, of course, if it is a rabbit that is getting high amounts of calcium. And we also have to try to do things, if we have a rabbit that is overweight, we want to increase their exercise, we want to promote weight loss for them. If there is a urinary tract infection present, we're going to be putting them on antibiotics. And of course, if they do have any other secondary symptoms, such as gastrointestinal stasis syndrome, then we need to be treating those issues as well. Oh, and the picture down here in the corner, that's just a little bunny, an example of a rabbit getting subcutaneous fluids. So that's a syringe full of fluids, and it's just being injected into the, the subcutaneous tissue between the shoulder blades there. So that's one way that we give them fluids. Okay, so follow-up for this particular condition. Um, it can be quite variable. Some rabbits that come in with this particular problem can... We can deal with the problem, we can cure it, we can get rid of it. Those tend to be the rabbits that it was caused by a urinary tract infection, or it was truly that they were getting too much calcium in the diet. So certainly there have been cases where we have cured this, but there have also been plenty of cases that we don't cure it. It's something that we control. It's something that we help to get that bladder, <laughs> bladder sludge reduced, but we don't uh, ever get rid of it completely. And so some rabbits need to be on things like fluids long term, um, really have their calcium very restricted in their diet. So 